Hello. Here's a short video concerning this um, Yaesu FL2100 HF amplifier I have. Up until um, uh, this morning, as far as I know, it was running fine. I did a bit of a shack rearrangement. I got um, I got rid of the uh, 530 and the 830 which was sat on the top shelf here. I've now put them upstairs in the spare bedroom in a shack I'm building up there. So I'm left with the um, 870 uh, which is the radio I've been running with the 2100 amplifier. been using it on the lower bands, mainly on 80 meters. Uh, but I haven't really used a tidy for around about a month or so. But I put the amplifier on this morning and uh, I noticed that um, it was drawing some current um, around about 20 milliamps or so. That's not key down or anything. It was just drawing about 20 milliamps or so, and I couldn't, I couldn't remember if it always did that. I don't think it. I don't think it did. I'm pretty sure the uh, the meter fell back to zero as it is now. Um, but on uh, on key up, it's drawing the the uh, the normal uh, 90 milliamps. Um, but saying that, I put about 80 watts in to drive the amplifier, and I was getting only 200 watts out which is strange. Last time I used it, it did do well over the 400 watts into a, uh, into a dummy load. It's my dummy load. It did do well over the 400 watts into a dummy load. And today it's only doing barely 200 with 80 watts driving. So I thought, hmm, a bit of a strange run. Possibly it could be the uh, tubes. So I changed two tubes with a couple of uh, tubes I have here. Still exactly the same. Um, last time I used it, it ran fine. <laughs> Basically all I did was turn the amplifier off and I haven't used it for a, a month or so. Possibly two months, maybe a little bit longer. Put the amplifier back on this morning, not working. Very, very strange. Anyway, I had a bit of a dig about in there. I tested a few things, everything seemed okay. Until I came across these resistors. They, um, they connect to the actual grids on the tubes, part of the biasing circuit. Turn the uh, tubes off when you're on receive, basically, to uh, save power and to save stress on the tubes. Anyway, that, resist that resistor there, as you can see, looks slightly different to that resistor. It's very similar in the, uh, uh, in the resistance. It's supposed to be 33 ohms. This one's a little bit more, but that was the closest I had. That's a replacement I put in about an hour or so ago. This is the original resistor, 33 ohms. It's rated for one watt according to the schematic diagram. A 33 ohm carbon type resistor, and it's um, it's gone. It's gone open circuit. How we can go open circuit just from sitting there as it is now, I don't know. But it's gone open circuit. It doesn't look burnt at all. It looks fine. It took a while to find it because I thought it can't really be that. Uh, the amplifier worked fine last time. I turned the amplifier off and lo and behold today it doesn't work. So anyway. It was this resistor, I tested it in conjunction with that resistor. That one's reading 33 ohms. This one isn't. So I changed it for this one, uh, which is around about 40 odd ohms. I think about 47 ohms or somewhere about there. I can't remember exactly. And um, the amplifier is now running again. But isn't it ever so strange? One minute something works and works fine. You turn it off, and the next minute it doesn't work. So there we go. Anyway, there's the amplifier on its side. Just one word of warning uh, don't really go inside a tube amplifier unless you know about the voltages inside them. The, the voltmeter is marked in kilovolts. And if you can see on the scale, it reads 0, 1, 2, 3. This amplifier runs on about 2,400 volts or 2.4 kilovolts. 
so you expect to see the needle up around there and uh, that sort of volume is enough to um, give you a nice set of wings and send you to the amateur radio emporium in the sky so basically uh, if you do want side one make sure you discharge the capacitors leave it overnight if you if you can discharge the capacitors to uh, ground I use a, uh, a grounding tool here I, uh, I put this on the on the chassis and there's a series of resistors in the body of this probe it measures 10k altogether there's a series of them to do that and uh, I short out once I've left it a half hour or so for it to drain naturally I short out the uh, the anodes short out the power supply capacitors to ground to make sure there's nothing there and just as a double a double safe method I then ground whatever is left with a screwdriver. Don't initially do it with a screwdriver. It's not the best way. Uh, it could be a bit like an arc welder. It's not the safest way. It's not advised really. But anyway, there's the amplifier. I'll um, I'll just put it. Uh, I'll just put. I'll put the bottom case on, and I'll turn it around the right way, and uh, fire it up. Hello. Okay, I've got the uh, the base back on the amplifier. I haven't put the uh, the compartment back on yet, so it will be extremely dangerous if you should put anything inside there, inside the uh, RF deck, because there's going to be very very high voltage in there. As I said, 2.4 kilovolts on the anodes of the valves. So keep your fingers out if you do work on an amplifier. I'll just spark it up. There we go. As you can see, it's around about 2.3 kilovolts. You turn the, the light off. You can see the uh, heaters or the cathodes stand to warm up. Give it around about a minute or so. Give me enough time to <coughs> turn the radio on. And seven, seven megs there into a dummy load. And with a a Daiwa, a newly acquired Daiwa power meter. You know, it's quite an old model. I've been after one for quite some time. Anyway, that should be uh, enough. And set the uh, drive power to around about halfway or so. Key up the radio. I'm, I'm having to use a foot switch to um, key the amplifier. As I said, I'm having to uh, use a foot switch to key the amplifier because it's not connected to the to the radio in the sense that the radio keys the radio uh, that the radio keys the amplifier. Sorry, there is no RF sensing in an amplifier like this, unlike uh, a lot of CB amplifiers. It does need to be um, hard switched. So if I turn the uh, operate switch on, key the I'll press the foot switch. We have around about 90 milliamps or so, maybe a little bit higher. You can see that the plate voltage drops just slightly. The radio is keyed, I've got it on lock. And um, we shall now see what sort of power. I'm still driving the um, amplifier with about half power. So tilt the light back a bit, just give me a bit of a glare. Let me turn the power supply on to 
work the peak circuit. And then we see around about 300 watts. If I turn the radio up just slightly. Four. See it peaking around about four hundred. Turn the drive down just a bit. Okay. So I've keyed the key the radio again. It's on lock. Four four Four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. 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 There we see we're on the uh, 1.5 kilowatt scale. And um, uh, the one represents a 100, the two is a 200, and so on. So 5 is 500, 6 is 600 watts. We have, hello, 4, 4, 4, hello, 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 4, 4, uh, anywhere around about 6 to 700 watts coming out of the amplifier. More than enough for the... Um, Legal limit UK, which is 400 watts, and as you can see, we don't have the um, uh, the current being drawn anymore. So I guess it was down to that resistor all along. Which, um, if we look on the look on the schematic, would have been this resistor here. R201, 33 ohm, 1 watt, and it's part of the uh, part of the bias circuit. So there we go, back up and running. Nice one. Put the case back on there and whatever now. Flick it off, and you'll see how long it takes for the uh, voltage to drain away. So be safe, and I'll see you again.